Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, um, I'm back here in my lockup. Another motorbike video for you today, XJ900S. Uh, so unfortunately, when I was doing the exhausts and whatnot um, in a previous video uh, a few weeks ago, I discovered that I had a screw in my front tyre. Uh, so I've since had that tyre removed, got a new tyre on the rim. Um, I'm sitting in a situation now where I've got the basically the front wheel of the bike, it's sitting on a jack. So now that I've got the new tyre fitted, I'll let you see it and uh, we'll talk you through how, how to fit a front wheel to an XJ900S. Mm -hmm. So this here guys, this is how I left it. Um, it's kind of safe enough, you know, you just have a wee trolley jack on the spindle there uh, to simulate the the holding point for the front wheel. And then you just have the bike sitting there on its centre stand. Um, I used to do a, a strap in my other lockup, uh, basically strap it up to the roof there, uh, just for extra, extra security in case it topples. Um, but I didn't feel the need with this new trolley jacket, you know, it felt really secure, so I just left it as it was. Um, but... I've got the old tyre here, um, I just thought I'd let you see it, uh, so there was a wee bit of wear left in it, but you know, it, it is fairly used, uh, but then you can see the, the nail, well the screw there, um, I don't know where I picked it up, um, don't know how long it's been in there, it's quite concerning, you know, because all it takes, you know, you're blasting along the road, you get a wee puncture, it's kind of a scary scenario to picture yourself in, but well, since... Uh, since got this new tyre fitted. Um, so it's matching tyres, it's it's Dunlops, Dunlops that I've got on this. Um, so there we are, this is this is the new one, I'll have to get these stickers off it and that. But quite happy with, quite happy how this looks. Um, obviously it'll need to be scrubbed in once we fit it. The bike's just run out of MOT, so um, this is another new thing to be on the bike when I take it for an MOT. Obviously the front of the engine and everything, as you know, um, that's all been tidied up already. There's still a wee bit of corrosion here and there. Um, I'm going to have to give the swinging arm a wee bit of attention, uh, but um, I'll just take it as it is just now um, and keep working on it bit by bit. So for counterbalance, I've got my glamorous assistant Connie here. And what I'm going to ask Connie to do is just jump on the back of the bike and sit on the on the pillion seat there. Um, and that'll just lift the front of the bike up a wee bit and allow me to fit the front wheel. Um, it's always handy to have a second person just as a weight. Uh, keep the back wheel on the ground, front end up in the air. That's how I do it anyway. Um, it's certainly not the type of bike that you can uh, fit paddock stands to and whatnot. So... Uh, yeah, Connie, if you just climb on there and carefully does it, remember it's on a on a thing on a jack here. So if you just climb up, I've got the bike just now, and then you'll feel the bike rock into the back. That's it, front end's lifted up. Um, so put your feet on the pegs and get comfortable. You're going to be there for what 10 minutes or so. Happy enough? Uh -huh. So as you can see here, that's just lifted the front of the bike up again. I'll be able to get the trolley jack out of the way um, and then start fitting the front wheel here. Right, so as you can see, I've got a new camera angle here. Hopefully you'll be able to just see me working away. Get this trolley jack out of the way. And it's been a handy trolley jack that, um, and it's a three ton jack, so it's able to uh, sort of lift my camper van and, and my mum and dad's motorhome as well. So quite a handy one there. So what I'll do is, Obviously the spindle was just put through here to like kind of keep the jack, give it a footprint, that sort of thing. Um, so we'll take everything out of the way. A bit dry here as well, so I'm going to get a bit of grease on there. Uh, just kind of keeps the grease in the bearings of the wheel. Uh, I'll have to go and find some of that. Okay guys, I fully admit I've not got any grease in this lockup, so I'm just going to crack on um, and I'll revisit that uh, in a couple of weeks. But it's easy enough to decide what way around the wheel goes. Um, you're, you're pretty much looking at the side for the washer. Um, and then you're identifying the side that the speedo drive goes in. Obviously you can easily see where the speedo cable comes down. Uh, so that makes you know that you're putting the wheel on 
um, the right way around. So you just try to get the, the speedo drive there in situ um, and then the washer bit should just pop in there. So it only goes into the wheel in one orientation. It's got a flat side and a narrow side. So obviously the narrow side will go into the actual wheel itself. And then you just need to, once you've got them sort of sitting pretty inside the, the space of the, the lower forks there, obviously it's not going to be directly um, in line. So what you're looking at is a little lift, just, just like that. And then you have to sort of pop the spindle through. So what I'm going to do is, because I've not got any grease, I've not cleaned this up properly. I'll just make sure the threads are all clean now. Um, and they look okay, but once I get it through the through the wheel, there, there is some grease still in there. Um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll give this a, like, a WD-40 wash on the thread size, side uh, before I put the nut on. Actually, scratch that. This isn't a nut. This screws into the lower fork leg on this bike. Um, so I'm going to go and give that a wee wash first. And all I'm doing, I've just, just sprayed that threaded section there with a bit of WD-40. And we'll get a nice wee cloth here just to clean off these threads. Just in case it's picked up anything that's going to damage them when you, when you screw it in. But that looks lovely and clean now. I do wish I'd brought some grease with me, I'm not going to lie, but well, I want to get the wheel on anyway for now. So that's it, straight through. Simple as that guys, the wheel's kind of on. We just need to get the tools, tighten that up. Um, so there's a nut on one side, and as you turn the spindle, it will screw into the fork on the other side and you're looking for the thread just to protrude maybe a thread or two uh, out the other side of the fork um, and then there will be torque settings but I usually just give it a wee beef up uh, there's a pinch bolt nut as well which will also that goes through the fork on on this side so the throttle side as you're looking at the bike um, and we'll give the threads of that a wee clean as well a bit of copper slip wouldn't hurt either um, so like I say I'm going to revisit this Right, so that's me got the ratchet together, guys, for this. And the spindle nut size on this, if you don't know, is a 19mm. And um, so we'll give that a wee, a wee beef up. So what's worth remembering is, and this is a schoolboy thing to remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And that there, that's the spindle in. And the thread's just poking out the other side of the fork, so I'm quite happy with that. Like I say, I've got the pinch nut, pinch bolt. So I'm going to go and give that thread a wee clean up, WD-40 in this cloth again, uh, just before I pinch up the lower fork. And what this pinch bolt's doing, um, it's a little bit of security really. Um, so it's just clamping the lower fork onto the spindle there. And although you've beefed the fork up and it's threaded into the other fork there, um, this pinch bolt is just going to hold the shaft uh, and just stop it working its way free. So when you're working with Allen head uh, bolts, you have to make sure that the tool's right into its seated position. 
um, you don't want to rim the head of these because obviously if you had to sort of drill this out here, you're looking at a world of pain. So just make sure you don't damage it when you put it in. You also don't want to over tighten things either because you can squash the threads together. Um, and then it just makes it more difficult to remove and you, then you can't reuse the part. So as you can see guys, we've got, uh, we've got the handle calipers on here. Now I've not done any service work to the brakes at all um, for this removal, but there's a lot of beef there on them. Uh, they were cleaned up not too long ago, so the eagle-eyed amongst you will probably realise that it's not standard calipers on this bike. Um, they're called uh, blue spots and they're on uh, like faster types of Yamaha motorcycles, but they're a direct replacement, so why not, eh? So we'll get the we'll get the speedo drive in and out of the way first. Just screws in there. Oh, what might be worth mentioning is okay, well, right. So it's well greased up, but I keep forgetting to do this. Don't forget to put that bracket on. That just keeps the the cable free. Uh, maybe moving in towards the wheel and that. Uh, so this is just just to hold it into position. Uh, so put that on first before you connect it to the drive. I'm not quite catching the thread there, but I think that's it this time. And make sure that's screwed right in as well because I've done it where I've not actually beefed it up enough and it seemed to cause a wee bit of vibration there on the on the on the clocks, you know. So now it's just a case of kind of opening up the pads and that calper just slides right into position there like, like that. And it's really important to double check everything on your bike when you've done any work to it like this. Because I've seen me in the past, maybe 10 years ago, took this from an MOT. And the MOT tester guy says to me, your caliper's not tightened on. And so I'd been distracted when I'd had the brakes off and been cleaning the pistons and uh, put new pads in, put it back together. I think I'd had a phone call or something. I'd forgotten to tighten up the bolts that hold the caliper in. And then I rode it the five miles to the MOT se test centre. So, yeah, just double check everything because that could have been a disaster. Um, fortunately, I got away with it that time. And, and since then, I've taken it as a bit of a lesson just to double check my work before I, before I get on the bike and take it away. And I was just saying, if, don't forget about that bracket and I forget to bolt it in. I think it goes on the upper one, actually. So we'll just unscrew that, pop it through the bracket. Right, so hands up if any of you noticed that I put on this, this bracket the wrong way around. It only goes one way because it's actually shaped so that it sits actually around the, the lug there for the caliper. I had it the wrong way around, but I've rectified that now. I just need to give the caliper a wee rock, just so that that threads in nicely. And then, like I said before, we'll just tighten these all up now, so don't forget. Right, so, what well you've got to remember, twin discs, don't forget to do the caliper on the other side. We've got two here. Some bikes are single discs. 
makes it all a wee bit easier. We did the we did the most, most difficult side first because we've not got a speedo drive, we've not got the cable there for or brackets and that to worry about here. It's just a case slipping this calter in and then on with the mountain bolts. I will be quite happy to revisit this at a later date though because there's a few wee bits that I'm going to still tidy up. Um, the bracket here that holds the uh, braided brake line, so the rubber's come out out of the bracket, so that's needing changed. But I think I'm wanting to take the bracket off and give it a wee paint up as well. I think though. Once I tighten this up, that's this bike ready for its MOT. Um, I'll keep working on it, of course, once I've MOT'd it, but I'll be quite happy to get, get a bike on the road. For those of you that watch the channel, you'll know that I bought a wee XV535 Drago. Uh, it's supposed to be run about on while, while I tinkered with this bike. But it's not quite worked out that way, because um, it's bogging out, so... Uh, it'll be good to get a bike on the road anyway, we're getting some really fantastic weather, it'll be nice to get out in it. So, all I've got to do really is take the stickers off of that tyre, which will mean wheeling the bike out, because they're, they're in an awkward place at the moment, the way they've landed. But, it'd be rude not to start the bike up while I'm here, give it a wee bit of warmth. today because we're actually on Sunday the garage is shut but I'll certainly contact them through the week uh, book it in get it down there get a year's ticket uh, but for now thanks for watching please hit the like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one bye for now